Hello, my dear church boys, and welcome back to yet another episode of St. Robert's Day Game Podcast. And this time I'm chatting with a student who I would definitely put in the top three of strongest cases of approach anxiety I've seen in all the years of day game coaching. Over the years, I've worked with many guys with very strong AA, and kind of the more I do the content about these situations, about these guys, the more it attracts new guys with very strong AA. And well, there is a very simple reason I like to talk about these cases because I think that all these stories about good looking guys who are socially in general good with people, who are outgoing, all these stories about these guys learning day game and then get doing really good in day game, those stories are boring. Internet is full with them. But that's not the average day gamer. The average day gamer, you know, maybe has some, some reasons why day game isn't working for him. It's not that easy for him to crack it. So I think for the average day gamer, it's much more interesting to see a story of other average guys learning game and finding out what were their stories, what worked for them. And the one thing I realized when working with guys with very strong AA is a fairly small, small percentage of guys who think they have crippling approach anxiety actually have crippling approach anxiety. Most of the guys that I've worked with who have very strong AA have been able to easily overcome it. And it's only a few guys who really, really, really struggle with AA during coaching and then after coaching. So it's not as bad as it seems in most cases. And if you have really, really bad case of AA, then yes, I understand the likelihood of you becoming a really good day gamer and getting, I don't know, like 30, 50, 100 day game, like having all these crazy adventures is fairly low if you are one of those exceptions whose AA is really, really bad. But it doesn't mean that if your goal for day game is to find a girlfriend, it doesn't mean you cannot do that even with a fairly strong case of AA because these things are very different. In some ways, if you are looking for a girlfriend, then it's much easier than getting a bunch of lays. But before we get into a conversation with the student, a few updates about the coaching spots and other things. In September and early October, I'll have a few coaching spots in Poland and a few in London, United Kingdom. Poland is, I'd say, the most popular destination for day game travel for, for this year and for the previous year. But I think it's a great place, place for learning because you have so many girls, Polish girls, Ukrainians who have moved there, tourists, etc. It's amazing. It's great volume. They're cute. They're fairly easy to stop and fairly receptive to day game. But if you are from the UK and you prefer to get coaching in a place where you will be day gaming after coaching, then well, it's a good idea to learn day game in London, where I will be at some point in September or early October. And then after that second part of October, I'm planning to go to New York City. So if you are from there or you want to travel to New York City to learn day game, then this is a great opportunity. Or I can also travel to coach in your city. And I want to spend November exploring Colombia. I've been to a bunch of places there, but I think I'm ready to check out the place again. I have a few cities in mind and I want to take one or two students with me and spend the month traveling around Colombia and exploring different places there, both for day game and for great nature. So if you are interested in learning day game between September and November, then go to the description, click the link there, and you'll find all the information about how coaching usually happens, prices, etc. But if you are already going out and you're getting some numbers and some dates, but you are struggling with your texting or you don't know exactly what to do on dates so those girls would want to come home with you, then head over to daygamecourses.com where I have a free texting guide and a free dating guide. Both of those are very step-by-step in depth so you know exactly what to do once you're getting those day game numbers and dates. And by the way, this interview is audio only to preserve the privacy of the guests. So if you prefer, you can simply listen to this on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. Let, let's start with... Let's start with a story about uh, how you started day gaming. Oh. Um, I think I started when I moved to another city. When I finally moved to like a big city that was like uh, something I had to experiment with when I was watching some YouTube. Fuck, man, this must have been like 2018 or something like that, 2019. 
So I, I found it on YouTube a while ago. And I actually started from the rational mail. That's actually how I got, I got into it. And I read that. Terrible book. beginning. Yeah, yeah. Terrible beginning. It's, it's a shit book, honestly. But at least it, it like, it kind of opened my eyes to the whole pickup scene in the early days. And I, and I just thought like, holy fuck, it makes total sense. Why? How come I never thought about approaching chicks during the daytime or anything like that? You know what I mean? And so... Oh, man, I remember, like, the first day going out and then just being like, holy fuck, this is hard. Yeah. Like, one open, bro, my fucking heart was pumping and shit like that. And so, yeah, that's that's the first time I ever opened or started day gaming or tried it. So, how did you decide to get coaching the first time? Because I've coached <clears throat> you before. This isn't our first rodeo. Yeah, I, I think it was, like, I just went on a long drought that I had never been on before. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And I remember this because there was this regular that I was seeing. And I and I botched it. I fucked it up. And I had just gotten so furious with myself that I was like, all right, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to fucking email this guy. Email this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm fucking doing it, man. And then um, that was it. Once, once I made that little piece of commitment... Then we started talking, and then I just started planning it out, and then... Yeah, but you made a big commitment, because you were like, fuck this, let's go to Europe for a month, and then just, two like, months. two months. You spent two months in Ukraine. We spent two months in Ukraine, yeah. Yeah, I think it was because I'd done enough sets to where I felt like I needed it. I thought that, and, and I think it was still, like, a good decision. Yeah, of course. Because, like, I think I ended up feeling pretty comfortable in Ukraine after we did, like, a five-day coaching, but then it was, like, pretty solidified. Yeah. Until it wasn't, you know what I mean? I mean, you even got your chest piece. Like your I did. Chest I, I, this is my fucking souvenir that I got from fucking Ukraine. And I covered up an old piece of shit, fucking ratchet. Some, you know, you've seen that meme that looks like no rag rats. Yeah. yeah like, that's literally what it fucking looks like. But, it, you know, we all made So you did a cover up. Okay, so we, 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 did, we did a lot of work in Ukraine. Um, you did you did get laid in Ukraine. We're, we're not going to go into detail of that story. That's you went there. You got I think two lays in Ukraine, right? One lay in Ukraine. Yeah, it was one. Um, but the big thing for you always was AA, and and and, and that's the kind of the story of this podcast is is the mental games in general, dealing with your own mental shit. Uh, is is kind of the conversation. That's why we were doing this this podcast episode overall. So um, then, what happened? You went back to your what happened was country of brave, no, young, and I, whatever. I think it happened actually before I even went back to the states. What happened was I got exhausted, just going out all the time, and then I gave myself a break, and then I gave myself a little bit longer of a break, and then it just turned into like. I don't even fucking know, man. Like two weeks, but for whatever reason, my mind was like, no, no, no. I still, I still got it. And I remember like going to Kiev and trying to do some sets. I'm like, fuck, this is hard again. This is hard again. And then I started to have that panic again. And then um, that's that's kind of how. Oh, it's all good. I remember uh, when I got back to the states, so I got sick. And then it was like a good week of not opening anything anyway. And then finally going. And hitting the streets, and it was like, oh fuck, I'm right back where I was. At least that's what it felt like in the moment. Yeah, but that, that's that's what happens. Like if you take a really long break after coaching, you do get back to to where you started. And when I was actually starting to coach, like it's my it's not my job to get students to get students results. It's it's my job to do everything I can to so that they would get results and they would learn day game and so that they would be able to day game back when they get home and so they would understand that they have to go out on their own with no breaks and I even sometimes offers I say guys like they, they take five days but we very often do like four days in person then I say listen as soon as you're back let's leave one day for that remotely and I, I do that just because yeah. it's not my job to, to make someone a good day game but it's my, it's my job it's not my responsibility but it's my responsibility to do everything I can so that when they go back, that, that they're, they're still day gaming and they're doing good. And in the beginning, I was feeling really bad when someone like, 
I invested all the work like into into coaching them. They're doing good. I'm mean, getting some lays or same day lays, but then they go back home and just like, oh, I took a week off and like, and they're like gone. Right. Just they game like maybe like two weeks off and they're like it's gone. It, it's 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 out. It's it's gone. Yeah. And they can't deal with it. And like because you have you gotta. In the beginning, I was feeling bad about it, but then at one point I was like, you know, like. I did my best. Like I did whatever I could. That's why I offer people very often to, to spread out coaching over longer period of time and all of that shit. And yeah. I'm like, because I work with a lot of people with really crazy AA, and then and, me being one of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. You you have uh, some of the strongest AA I've ever worked with. I would put you in. Uh, I would say top top three. Wow. I would put you in top three. Top one would be a guy I coached with Tusk sent to me once. Uh, but it was it was a guy who took eight drinks before we started and he still couldn't do it. I was like that. He could do he he could open when he was like partying on nightlife and he was coked out out of his mind and then he could like talk to chicks but during the day it was impossible. I can and then you are splitting the, the, the second and third place with an Asian guy I coached in Bogota. Really? Yeah, yeah, you're you're splitting the second and third place definitely with him, but but you have very different issues and and he, he he's his AA with me was also like I could barely get him into sets even when I was next to him sometimes, but you know we worked it out and then it worked at the end. But so okay, it seems like mine's kind of like it's more related to exhaustion. I think. Yeah, yeah, your AA is is very different. So. So, and and then you went back, you fell off the wagon because a few weeks off and then you say, hey, like, you told me to fuck off, but can you come and, like, help me again a little bit? And I was like, okay, we're going to do, like, a ridiculously stupidly low price cause just because I'm, like, nearby and I, I can just fly there and coach you. And so we did a few more days in, in your city, which we're not going to name, but yeah. it's, I would say... It's it's a one good of place. The, one of two two best places in the U.S. for day game. Allegedly, one, top three top three places in the U.S. for day game, hands down. I think I think it's one of the top three places in the U.S. for day game, and that's a place no one knows about. Right, because everyone knows New York City and 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 Chicago. a few people know Chicago, but no one knows about your place. Yeah, I won't, I won't and by the way, it. if someone has watched the old interviews or which some of them are going to be taken down by the time i publish this okay if someone watches them and, and mentions in the comments where this is then there is a wonderful feature in youtube where i can just mute someone's <laughs> all of his comments so like and it's people like people comment you gotta stay on top of that then. but it's funny like people comment and they think they've commented because they see the comment right. no one else sees it it's a really cool feature oh, YouTube has, and any every time someone makes like a really dumb comment, it's like, okay, fuck you, you're 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 muted, and they they don't even know they're muted. So it's like it's like no, they just think nobody's even watching it or even cares. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, awesome. but you have to leave like a really rude comment. It's like, oh, this digger is stupid. Like, fuck him. Up. Like, okay, yeah, bye. Anyways, yeah. So, but let's get back to our conversation. Uh, so uh, we did it over three days. And it was like, I had to change my sleeping schedule because I work nights, so that obviously really exhausted me. The first, I remember this because the first session was actually pretty good. It was like 10 sets. You know, I didn't, I got like a few numbers, but in the States, they're ridiculously flaky. So, and I wasn't even focused on that. It was just, can I open, can I open, can I open? What ended up happening, and I think that what happens with AA is I get the spotlight effect a lot when I feel super fucking exhausted and I'm just not in the mood to even do it. And I, I, it's, I think, I think the only way around it is just, you know, just take breaks and then come back and whatnot. But we had to do it over three days. So it definitely helped me. I was able to do one to two sets a day. And then I was going out every single day. And then I ended up getting a lay out of that. You know, yeah. the, the chick was fucking beautiful too, you know, and I, I, the weird thing for me is like, and I guess maybe it's because when I came to day game, I didn't have zero lays. I had a reasonable number of lays. This was the, I think the main goal, the way I saw it, it was like, this is how I get the, the girls that are way better looking than me. You know, because like I was telling you, what was my, when we were asking about what my main motivation, the first date that I had in Ukraine was the hottest chick I've ever been on a date with ever. And I was literally like, there's, I can't think of anything that is negative about this girl's face, this girl's body. It's just like anything. And I got her on a fucking date. And that was, this was the first one. Immediately, I was like, this is fucking possible. You know what I mean? And 
I I think that was always my main motivation because like even if I fell off the wagon it's not like I wasn't gonna get laid it was just I want that I want to open up my horizons and maybe in some respects of it that makes makes me lazier I think that's definitely possible I feel like dating apps could definitely make me lazier I think that's absolutely the case but when I think back like if you're if, if somebody was to say do you ever regret it do you ever get getting get coached I'm like no fucking way because at the very least like I, I still learned a lot of things outside of the coaching itself it was just like me and you talking about it me and you discussing things me just picking up a certain vibe of some of the mistakes that I'm making you know what I mean and then, and then what I ended up learning is one I over escalate on dates I've always done that. Because Americans do it a lot. Yeah. yeah and I think American d- dates are different in the U.S. Like in the U.S. And in general, in the Western world, where, you, where a girl comes out on a date with you, you're like, it's already, like, you know, it's done. It's like, done. it's done. It's like, you know, in, in, if, you're, if you're not fucking, mm. if you're going out on the dates in the Western world and are not getting laid on the first night. Well, I mean, not with everyone, of course, but Almost with like a decent stuff. percentage. But no, with, with a decent percentage, let's say 50%. Yeah. Okay. Then you're fucking it up. Like, that's it. You're fucking it up. You're, you're somehow fucking it up because... That's a you issue. Yeah, that's a you issue. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah, because in, in the Western world, date, date means a lot. Like, it's not in Ukraine. You probably learned that. Yeah. <laughs> date means nothing. Well, I think that's why I feel like Ukraine, in some respects, was actually, like, super good, though, because it actually taught me how to just be more patient. And I actually really needed that. Because you left, I was going out once a day, but what I ended up doing was I just got a photographer, one of my, a friend of a friend, and I got some, you know, fairly nice pictures, and I was in the process of switching jobs, so I had like three weeks to just, you know, and that was when I, that was the time frame that I got my day game lay, but it was like, kind of like turning on a switch as far as the online dating scene was concerned for me. But I, I did finesse it. I was like on three different apps. I, I bought Bumble Premium. I got Tinder Platinum. You know, I did that whole fucking thing. I grinded it out. But I had three weeks to fill in as much as I could. And then all of a sudden, I was just getting dates left and right. And then, you know, I think I racked up like, what, seven, eight lays in that ballpark within, what, five was weeks? Was it back in the U.S.? That yeah, was back yeah, in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was after you left, and then that was me, like, updating it. And then um, I just kind of, I, you know, for me going out, it turned into, like, a one-day gap to a two-day gap to a three-day gap. And as long as I was, like, as long as I could do one set, fuck it, right? But that's true. That's for you. It's you got to do one, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. so are you saying that, yes, you were getting laid from online, but was that the thing keeping you back from going out or I labeling think, you? I to think it made out? me lazier because okay. you're still, you're still going to, put some energy into I treated the online dates the same as I would treat like a day game. Yeah, of day. course. Date is a date. Oh, for the most part. Right. And so those do require some amount of energy, but I think you also get satiated. You reach a point where you're like, I'm good. I don't need to fucking do any more of this. It, it, Abundance. Yeah, you get you get to a certain level where or enough in within a certain time frame um to where you just don't give a fuck. And the only thing you start caring about is you know, the quality. I ended up, within that bunch, I ended up finding this girl that I actually already, I'd already slept with, but I really liked her. You know, she's one of these bipolar ADHD type. So oh, yeah, every time... Of, and that was your girlfriend for a while. After yeah, that, right? yeah. And so, and I, I, the thing that I kind of learned from her is that, you know, I think the thing that made me so attracted to her was this is high energy that she had. She's just, you know, when you're with her, she, you're like her whole, whole focus and all that shit. And she was wild. Like, uh, no pain tolerance, no gag rate. It's just amazing. <laughs> mm. That relationship lasted for about 10 months. But during that relationship, I was always kind of feeling this itch. Like, man... Ukraine was really fun. I think it would be cool at least, like, I was still daydreaming for some weird reason about, you know, hitting the streets and going back to being single for a while. And then once the relationship eventually fell apart, um, it was actually, like, the the most peaceful breakup ever. I, You know, she's like, I need you to, I need more from you. I'm like, look, I don't feel comfortable doing that, and I think maybe you should find somebody else. And it was like, it was weird, right? Because instead of being needy, it was very much like, um, 
I might, I may just not be the guy. And I felt like an adult doing it too. You right. know what I mean? So, uh, so you're, you were doing good online, uh, but let's clarify a few things because one thing guys online love doing, uh. they love saying, oh, this guy got laid because like, uh, so it, it disqualifies his results. It just means that he's a hot guy. He was, doing, uh, they might say, oh, he was getting laid online. So he was probably really good looking. And that's that why, that's why he got any lays in the game at all. It's just, we can disqualify his success because he's a classical good looking guy. Everyone loves to kind of loves, loves to have reasons why someone else is getting what they're not getting. And then uh, they're saying, oh no, it's just, I'm, I, it's not my fault. I'm just not as good looking. So, so before we kind of before these guys start kind of crying and, and and saying all of those things, um, let's go over some like. Qualities. Okay, you're 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 a decently looking. You're a decent looking dude, but you're not you're not like no one's gonna put you in a cover of a magazine or right. or you're not gonna get a modeling career. Yeah. But then again, an average chick would be totally happy be seen walking down the street with you because you're you're a decent looking dude but just like nothing special you know like right just as we could say like a nice girl that that you had a, almost had the same delay with she's like a decent seven you're like a decent seven that's it you sure. know you're like you know decent decent enough. i'm not in the eight nine category i'm not a male model i'm not in i'm not six foot three yeah how tall are you by the way in, um, in the freedom measurements in freedom measurements i always i'm like a quarter inch away from six foot which i always round is okay foot. so six foot okay that's one for for non-freedom people that's 180 180 181 182 182, 182 okay. something like that yeah. so you're tall enough but you're not like i'm average for latvia yeah you're you're average height for latvia you're average looking dude uh, with like a okay style you don't look boring in your style you have some tattoos um some of them you have covered because they were tribal as fuck <laughs> So, 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 so you're not the typical good-looking guy who just because because there are a lot of videos online or like all the infills or whatnot where you or the stories where you where you see really good-looking guys or really good-looking coaches just just getting results. This this isn't one of I don't do those stories anymore. I tell interesting stories where guys can actually see. Okay, this guy was struggling, but but this is how he did. That's more realistic. Is the average day gamer isn't. A model looking guy with with everything going for yeah. it. you know every all have our challenges and, and right uh, so you were in this relationship what in, what reignited the spark for day game I think it was I think it was a certain level of boredom in the relationship, but it was also recognizing that I don't really see this girl as being like my future wife, so it kind of just hit that ceiling already, you know. And so I would assume that it's probably had something to do with it. But it was also a feeling of like, I kind of need a challenge. Yeah, you know, I'm already kind of set on my career path. I'm making enough money. I'm kind of more or less everything outside of it, uh, outside of, let's say, day game or something like that uh, is, is super chill, super relaxed. So it's just kind of a recognition that, you know, you got to challenge yourself in some way. And in, in, in many respects, the way I see day game is like a form of like exercise, but like for your brain. Okay, so you you have this like urge or this, you know, this little spark. So like something is inside. Maybe, maybe it's just seeing college girls all the time. Like, man, I want to fuck those ones. You know? <laughs> so, so you have the, the that, 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 you know. What's what's the thing when the fire is out, but the coals are still like yeah. red, and and it's still the you know like yeah you have that thingy in you, and it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. The more time you spend away, I think. It's so, definitely. what's your thought process at that moment? Because you've tried it before, you have had coaching before, but you fell off the wagon. So, so what's your what's your thinking regards that? Like, so why the f fuck? They Would might. you try again if, if you um, tried and, and it didn't work out? And, and so, because I think that I may, I probably just made one simple mistake, which was taking too much time off. If I could do like once, you know, one week I did in Ukraine, it was 20 sets solo. I was like, man, I did it. It's exhausting, but at least I can do it. You know what I mean? So, this is actually controllable. I, my A isn't necessarily that bad. I think it's just more of a, you know, it's a juggling kind of thing, especially when I get back home, because I'm going to have a job. I'm going to be going to the gym. I'm going to be going to do, doing my whole fucking routine. So 
I looked at it as I just kind of fucked up this one time and I have an inability to get to that place on my own. But the other aspect was I, I actually kind of changed my mindset because it was, uh, I looked at it as more of like, hey, I got a travel buddy that I get to practice something that's kind of hard with. That's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah. So uh, more laid back because now I don't have this like glorification of day game. It's really just this is one way. Yeah. Which yeah, because back in the day here. it was it's day game or nothing. Yeah. But and now I, you're cracked online. You 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 had professional photo shoots for really really good pictures and, and you cracked online. Right. Uh, but uh, you, you did a lot of work. Uh, oh, yeah. you, you went through like your YouTube explorations and and. and and therapy and then and, uh, once I once I broke up with my girlfriend I saw it as like a perfect opportunity to just reset and so one of the things she said for me is that maybe I could try therapy also because I helped her get into therapy and whatnot and once we broke up I was like you know it's weird like once something happens to you you just have very little resistance to try something new you know so it just Met, you know, call the therapist, set up an appointment, started meditating, immediately got a journal. And it, it, the funny thing was, it's you know, usually you're kind of resistant to it at first. When people give you advice or when you you know you should do something, usually like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And uh, I think the interesting thing about this was that I just kind of willingly did it. And I just kind of dunked head first. So then I started meditating, you know, what, five minutes, ten minutes well, I started at five, and you worked at eight, and then eight goes to ten, and then now I do fairly consistently twenty minutes. And before I actually got, we, we I, you know, we got on this Euro trip. It was every day. I didn't skip one day, and it was twenty minutes a day every day. It was part of my routine, and that plus the journaling, which is extremely useful. Uh, you know, you just. You, to get your monies out of therapy, it's always best to have like a journal. You got one hour with them. You fucking write everything that you feel in any given moment. If you feel down one day, what's the reason? You know, and you can always like turn back and or look back and you can see it from fresh eyes. And so you kind of recognize that you learn this from meditation. You recognize that your brain is literally doing what it always does, which is think. And it never stops thinking. You always have thoughts rolling into your head. These are uncontrollable, but those thoughts are not you. Right? So... And that's what meditation is. You you see these things come into your head and you just kindly let them go and you go right back to your breathing. And so even the experts, well, all it is is they're so good at just doing this circular motion where the thoughts pop up, but they immediately get rid of it. And so now they're in this more meditated state for much longer. And so you you did you did a deep dive, both therapy and then you explored YouTube and then you were exploring uh, um, anxieties in general and approach anxiety and so what were some of the biggest at least lessons in theory yeah you learned before we before we met again in europe so what were the biggest lessons you learned through that uh so exploration? What, what aa actually is is just in the in the scientific term is cognitive distortions and what cog cognitive distortions are is uh, they can, they're broken into multiple classifications. So the spotlight effect is one of them. Personalizing, for example, is another one where you think it's all reflects on you and who you are and, and you know, and there's, there's a whole list of them, but it, the brain actually does this to protect itself in the short term. And it's very normal. The thing is, you just have to recognize that perhaps in the long term, it's, it's, it's not helping you. And so... To at least recognize it, uh, recognizing it helps you essentially not see it that way, if that makes sense. And and the Wait, other what recognizing these distortions yes. helps you overcome them easy. So that realizing that oh, this is how brain reacts and this is normal helps you overcome it. Yeah, because you start looking at yourself as there's nothing wrong with me. I'm a normal fucking human being. It's just my brain, for whatever reason, happens to respond this way more often than, let's say, the next person or the other person or the other person. And, and you know, you take a positive approach on 
on yourself too so you, you know uh, the thing i learned from therapy the most was more of the self-love shit because i actually did that too I mean, it wasn't just the meditation but it was i did some research that even listening to some self-love shit for you know three weeks for like 30 minutes a day and i just did that you know i did it for like at least a month or something like that because i absolutely had that you know i'm always like my my worst critic I'm always the first one to criticize myself. I'm always to do all those things. And then I, none of those things are helpful at all. Wait, did it start with the book I sent you? Did I send it to you? You did send it to me, but I wasn't fully committed until I got into therapy. So you saw the book and you're like, okay, fuck, fuck, fuck Bobby. No, fuck St. Bobby. No, no, you no. and your self-help was, nonsense. Like, fuck you. I, again, you know, like we were just talking about though, it's, it, sometimes when you get good advice, you're initially resistant to it. I feel like sometimes you maybe you need something to kick you in the ass a little bit in some ways. It's like, but at least got me in that tr- yeah, process. Yeah, of course, because I, I, I've given the book to multiple people. Uh, I've suggested the book to multiple people, and it's it's it. I don't expect any of those people to actually like look at the book and was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do like my self-love thing i'm gonna look in a mirror every day and like do my like affirmations of like oh i'm this and that and i'm like it's it's you know voo voo and like fucking some nonsense but yeah. there are people for whom i think that book is is very very helpful and uh, and uh, I, i've seen a few guys uh, i've suggested that book to a few guys when when it comes to aa and, and it's been helpful uh, to them uh okay and then you 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 explored you you meditated you did a bunch of self love things what what else did you do that really really helped the most um i feel like it was all it, i think the meditation and self love probably did more work than anything else i think that the thing that i learned from therapy is that um there's honestly nothing wrong with me <laughs> Which is like a good thing to hear, you know what I mean? But it's really like you just got somebody there to almost verify, yeah, well, what you're saying, I understand it, it makes sense. And and I, I think the thing I probably learned from, from therapy is, you know, kind of running, just kind of recognizing some of my, let's say, values in life without necessarily knowing ahead of time. So at least you put it to words and I don't know. Yeah, actually... I think it was useful in terms of prior to this trip because they, they try to reframe what day game was to me, which was just a way of challenging myself. That's all we're doing. That's all we're trying to do, you know? Yeah, so that was your thinking when coming coming on this day game trip. Yeah. I'm just, what was what was your, that the, was the term you used to use? Oh, voluntary hardship because... Voluntary hardship. Yeah, yeah. Another thing that I got into was a lot of like stoic philosophy. And so uh, I'm reading Marcus Aurelius's meditation right now. I'm like somewhere around halfway through it. But um, he's such an interesting character, dude, because he's like the most in that time. He's the most powerful man in the world. He's the last of the great emperors. Rome has never been more powerful. And he routinely writes about how people are going to get on his nerves and like fucking he has to show compassion, you know, which is such a weird thing to hear from somebody in that position. You know, you would think your ego's through the roof, right? But no, this, this dude is like, and he, he dealt with his own shit too. I think he had like 13 children. I think one or two of them maybe survived. So he's just surrounded by death all the time. And he's constantly reminding himself that he's going to die. I think that one's pretty good too. I think reminding yourself every once a day that, you know what? You know, I'm 30 now. That's 30 years that death has taken from me. And that, I, you know, in 20 years, I'm probably would be willing to give anything to be right here, right now. You know, and if you could just like remind yourself of that, then you're, you're going to be less bothered by the little things. So you did, you did a lot of exploration. You learned, you found things that work for you, that, that helped you, that make sense for you. And... Uh, so why did you decide to get coaching again? Um, um, cause I, I knew that getting over or controlling AA is gonna, is gonna be far more difficult or possibly near impossible for me. 
I just don't have that skill developed. And maybe if I do, if I did this for a year consistently or something like that, whatever, maybe I would, you know, I don't see it as something that I will never overcome, but it, where I'm at, I would probably say that I would still need coaching to get forced into opening. And I feel like you probably agree with that because I, I tend to get fucking exhausted. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things we've learned about you these weeks while we've been day gaming around Europe is that you get exhausted and as soon as you're exhausted, you're, you're done. You're, you can't overcome it. Yay, it's spotlight effect. You keep ejecting. So as, if you get exhausted or tired or in a shitty mood, like it's just not going to work. Whereas if you're in a good mood, it's a good setting. It's a relatively empty street and like, boom, everything just clicks. Even, even non-empty streets though, because, you know, first days here in Riga, I was I was verbalizing to you like, dude, there's oh, yeah. multiple people that were staring. It's all that other. It didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. Yeah. So if you're, like, no, yeah, no. if you're in, if you have good energy, Budapest like, was good vibe. Too. Yeah, Budapest was very packed. So if you if you have good vibe, good energy, then then it's whatever. Anything goes. And then if you get really tired, like today, then it's kind of like you can't open for like a, you, you didn't open anyone for a while. Not like you couldn't, you just didn't want to. And then you open this really hot check, like the tours coming from a gym and, and super hot check. It was like, how the fuck did he do this? It was like, you know, and you said it was empty street, no one around, no spotlight effect. So, so that's one of the big things we've learned with you that you really have to try to maintain, manage your energy. Yeah. I mean, uh, with, as far as the spotlight effect, it's the only thing I can really say to myself when, when I have it is nobody gives a shit. I'm not that important. Nobody cares. Yeah, They're, everybody's too focused on their life, just like you're focused. Yeah, but you can't you can't talk yourself into it. like you can't. It's not gonna work if you just think about that. You have to manage your energy because if you have shit right. energy, you can tell to yourself whatever the fuck you want. It like, won't just, make it, you do it. Like I could tell to you whatever the fuck I want. You wouldn't open like this. You were just like I know. And because and managing energy was was really really helpful when you came like out on like a good day you were in a good mood it's like okay let's go and then you're just like one after the next 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 I mean everything was working but then as soon as you're tired it's kind of worse but but the thing is we're, we're like the worst was uh, Poland the worst was Poland yeah because Poland was yeah it was shopping that was... mall it was you were busy there was a busy shopping mall you were tired and I think that was well because we're st we were still trying to figure it out. Because yeah. we're still kind of, I was still in this mindset of, is this shit even for me? Yeah. Right? And so, well, that was the first time I got tired. Because we started in Budapest. I did a, hand, a small handful of sets on my own, even prior to getting coaching. Because I'm already in that upper mood. Brno, we just kind of relaxed. But I did my own sets the whole time there. And then when we got to Poland, I just got fucking beat. And I didn't, it, well, the first day of coaching, it was 10 sets, but it was all shitty responses across the board. I think that played a factor. But then on the other side, it was even the dating apps. It was just, every time I tried to set up anything, it was flake, 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 flake. And I was like, yeah. fuck this. So, so let's maybe go over the cities you went to and, and, and what happened in each of them. Uh, the, the first of all, you did a very smart thing where, where a few people do this, that the, 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 you just... Uh, we were talking about we we met in Mexico and you just said, "Listen, I wanna I wanna get coaching in Europe in the summer, and wherever you wanna go, let's just go. Like let's just do whatever you want, go wherever you want. Because then if I like if I have to travel to a city to coach there, let's say someone says, oh, let's go to Poland and coach me.' It's like, okay, yeah, what do you want? Three days or five days? And then I will fly there, coach them for three or five days, and leave. And and we're gonna do those days in a row. But sometimes rarely like there are opportunities where where people can spread out the coaching days it's either coming to a city where i am or or if i'm going on a trip they can join me on a trip and then i i'm totally happy to spread out those coaching days over a longer period of time and 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 they can rest between the coaching days or we can sometimes do one session in a day if i have multiple students are going to coach someone else this for the second session of the same day and and that just lets them be less tired, rest more, go out on their own, try to overcome the AA on their own, integrated everything they learned, and it's just a better, better way of learning. And this is what we did. And we went to four cities. We went to Budapest in Hungary. We went to Brno in Czech Republic. So we went to Krakow, Poland. And then we were now in Riga, Latvia. Uh, first one was Budapest. So how was how was day game in Budapest? How did you like the girls? How did you like the day game? Were they receptive? Uh, What's up? 
I, I think it was 50-50 on the receptive part. I think they were very normal. I didn't really get it. I don't remember. It was like one or two blowouts within, the, you know, the 10 sets or whatever that we did. Um, and even the ones that I did solo, it was the same thing. But uh, for some reason, those Hungarian girls, I think you fucking said this to me a long time ago. You know, Ukraine is just going to ruin. Yeah. <laughs> Ukraine's going to ruin Jacob <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Budapest was all right. They do have asses. They got some titties over there. Not much for faces, but, you know, sure. Uh, I really like Czech girls. Yeah, because we, we spent only a few days in Budapest. Basically, we went to Budapest because we kind of were like, okay, let's go to Budapest. And that's what we booked. Up. We, we booked, And you wanted to see it as a city. Yeah. And that's what we did. We went there to see it as a city. And we do like a day of coaching just to check it out and start doing something. But it, we didn't go there for day game. Right. And out of all the sets we did, maybe you did like, like one that. or two on the place where everyone else is day gaming right. everything else we did somewhere else like because yeah. i i've coached there a bunch of times i know a bunch of really cool spots for there are no day gamers no one goes there no one like almost no one knows about these spots like some locals i have talked with locals and they're like yeah yeah you know them but shut the fuck up like i was like well, obviously like i think my student was there and, and we went there that's why we got sort of good reactions there because we, we, we were day gaming girls that haven't seen day gamers and then right and then we went to brno the second largest city in Czech Republic, so... Pretty small. Yeah, pretty small, the old town was there, but it was very beautiful, very small, I nice like food, ni nice weird Czech food, nice nice beers, yep. drinks everywhere, so how did how was that for day game for you? Um, I, I got lucky there, I got... I, I, it's not I, called getting lucky. I mean, it was actually, I think you would have liked the set if, if you actually had the uh, recorder on, it was, it was a good set, I... I there's one morning I was just feeling pretty good, decided to hit the streets, and uh, I did like, you know, five sets, but I think set number five four, sets, yeah. or set five, one of those two, it was uh, a girl that a number closed with, she was going to the movies, she was going over to watch Oppenheimer, and so, which is how we ended up watching Oppenheimer, I was like, yeah, there she go, uh, super receptive, super sweet, didn't even have to text her much, showed up. Um, sadly, I didn't even have because we spent a little time there. I didn't have any like real venues set up, but she was like, "There's this place that makes really good cocktails. Let's go here." And then she took me in another place that has the best Czech beer, and we did that. And then no resistance, bouncing back home, nothing. And yeah, she was wild too. She was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm twenty year. She was a twenty year old. I, I think in freedom measurements, she'd probably be like five seven, five eight. So yeah, fairly tall. Pretty tall. Yeah, yeah. And we did no coaching there. It was you know Huge. we were walking around like doing some sets here or there. We were more we'll, winging, to be honest. Yeah, we were like walking around winging, and and because I wanted to do some sets there, and and, and I like the chicks there, and and uh, yeah, I like them way better than than, than Budapest. Budapest. You yeah, too. You feel that way too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not Budapest has like it has it's the faces. Let's it has uh, Budapest I think has I would say it either either has bodies or faces, but not both. Yeah. I would, I would say at least for my taste and people have different tastes and I, I, blah I, blah I, blah I and we're not saying that everyone's there ugly. Like, shut the fuck up, go fuck yourself. If I get drunk you might hear me say that. no, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna see your Instagram jokes. <laughs> Let's not go there. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so we did Brno. We we spent a few days there. It was a cool city just to check it out. But then we went to the main place on our on our on our trip. We were going to Krakow in Poland. Why Krakow? Because it's I've been Warsaw. saying I've been saying for a year <laughs> that if you go to Warsaw the day game on a day game trip. I've been saying for a year that you're a moron. <laughs> it's like every coach is there. Every coach is there. Everyone is there. Like half of the group chat is in in Warsaw. It's just hilarious. And and I've been I've been talking about that for a year. And why would you go? Like day game is supposed to do this like be this like outlier thing. You're a rebel. You're approaching girls on the street. And then, no, you go, everyone goes to the same city because that's where everyone goes and you kind of have to fit in. But then again, you know, if people ask me, where should I go? And if it's an American who hasn't day gamed in Europe, I would still say, like, yeah, try. Poland, you got to go to Warsaw. You got to do it. If that's your first day game trip, 
you gotta do it. You yeah. you, you gotta go there. But but if you have been there, like going back there is just is I think it's ridiculous. It's conformist or whatever you want to call it. Like you're not you're not. If a, you haven't been there, you should go there. Right? If you haven't been there, you should definitely go there. For it's a cool city. It's great for day games. So many cool and cheap restaurants and and so full with hot chicks oh my god and it's it's great it's cheap it's amazing but if you have been there there are way better places in europe and we went to krakow a second largest city in poland a uh, university town but it had good traffic even in that was like early august when we were there good traffic it was great we spent one and a half weeks there we did a few days of coaching there uh, so how did you like krakow chicks receptiveness city whatever well, okay, so I kind of cheaped out, and I got, like, a really small studio with, like, one window staring at other buildings. So maybe that fucked with my mood or some shit like that, but after I got after I got a lay in, uh, in Brno, I just felt a little lazy vibe a little bit, so it was either the travel fatigue, maybe it was just kind of feeling like, ah, I'm good, I don't fucking care. Um... What's weird is it's saying it seemed like I got more attention while I was there, but the girls were not as receptive at all, at least from my experience. Yeah, the thing in Poland, like they stop, they're receptive to the open, but if you are used to girls just chatting with you just because you stopped them, then you might get that more in Warsaw than in Krakow, I would say. Like, in Warsaw, they are more receptive than in Krakow. But you can see, you could really feel that Krakow is a second-tier city. Not second-tier, but it's like, it's second largest city. It's a bit smaller. I do think it's more traditional than Warsaw. Mm. Like, I do get that feeling. And the lays I've gotten in Warsaw have been second-date lays. Okay. And one of them was with a virgin. Ah, that's very good. <laughs> you said Warsaw, though. It wasn't in Krakow? That was Krakow. That was Krakow. Oh, okay. That was Krakow. So, it does... Yeah, I did get a feeling that Krakow is a bit... A, a tad, tad bit more kind of traditional and, and... I mean, it's not more traditional than Ukraine. No, no, no. Ukraine is... But, you know, in Ukraine, you get brutal blowouts. Yeah, and in Krakow, you don't get brutal blowouts. You get right. some blowouts, but they're fairly receptive. And then... If you just give a compliment and you expect them to stay there, like that's not going to happen. You'll, sure. You'll need some stacking. You'll need some teasing and storytelling. They're going to stack. They're going to be flaky. I went on a date with this Ukrainian girl who was... Well, I just say she was very Ukrainian. <laughs> Whoever had listened to the Ukrainian struggle podcast episode, that's what it was. It was just... Ukrainian who knows what she wants and you're not going to change her mind. So it's it's best to just cut those dates short and leave. Strong boundaries, those ladies. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. But, you know, there's a lot of work. They're interested. I like them. because like Because they, they are, if you're doing the right things, oh, you're going to convert so many maybe girls. Oh, my God. You just got to figure out how to do that. Right. Um, so anything else about Krakow? Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I think that was like the first one where I was really contemplating whether or not I was messaging my therapist and shit about this, too. I was like, is it exhaustion? Do I just not give a fuck about this? Do, you know, what is it? And he's like, just give yourself a break and, you know, see how you see how you do. And uh, I, I kind of try to force some sets out of me. You know, what, are you, what would you call it? Like C game? Yeah, like, yeah some like whatever B game, whatever it is for me, and um, it was a shit ton of walking around and maybe doing one to two sets in the day solo, and then even with coaching because that was that was where it got bad that one time. It was you, you were there with me, but I only managed to do like three sets because yeah, just you were did super not exhausted. Give a fuck. Yeah. It was it was one of those where it was like. I don't care how hot she is. I don't feel like approaching. I don't feel like fucking talking to anybody. It was, it was, it was one of those. And you know, I think it's worth noting that the weather was pretty shit. Weather yeah, weather. it was raining all the time, so it was shit. But yeah, you have that. That's kind of made me really realize that if you're tired, it's just not gonna work. Like you gotta be, you gotta feel good, and then it's worth doing a session. It's sessions when you're tired just are not gonna work. You're gonna be not opening. You're gonna be doing shitty sets, ejecting super soon. Uh, whereas if you're in a good mood, if you're enjoying your, your day, then, then boom, completely different conversation. Then from Krakow, we, we took a well, break. I went to Riga you, and, and you, you went to another country to visit your relatives. 
I had to go visit some family, and um, I haven't seen them in like six fucking years, and so see what that was like, which is exactly the break that I needed, because uh, as soon as I came here, it was like a, another switch kind of flipped. The first week was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, so then we ended up in Riga. Um, day one of coaching, it was uh, it was super good vibe, a lot of energy, went on an eye date, uh, bounced her back to my Oh place. yeah, it was the second set you did. It, or like, I, I or like the fourth, the fourth, fourth set you did. Yeah, yeah. You, can you tell about that? Yeah, it's hilarious. So, yeah, this one's pretty good. So I, I number closed one girl. This I thought I was going to be Eskimo brothers with some Italian, but I guess that didn't. Happen. Oh yeah, with Mario, right, <laughs> right. He banged her from online, <laughs> but uh, she wasn't. She wasn't available. Anyways, I went on an eye date with this girl, and it was the most like I went blank. I went just complete blank. Hey, you look really cute. Uh, what are you doing? Do uh, you want to grab a coffee? It was like that. <laughs> and it was like, you were like closing for a coffee. And she was like, oh yeah, coffee now? Okay, let's go. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was really, you met a yes girl. It was, she, she was I, like, I don't, I mean, maybe you, it sounded like that to you. But I remember saying like, you want to grab a coffee or something like that? And she's like, yeah. And then she actually just led me. She took you to a coffee place, yeah, because you did not know, like, I was sending you, like, hey, Links this is, like, a shit. good place for a night date, really good coffee, like, do this. I was sending you date menus and everything. And... Yeah, and, um, yeah, it was it was good. We sat down, we had a coffee, talked. She's very, she seemed a little introverted, so I had to kind of, I felt like I had to do a shit ton of work. I had to really kind of put some work in there to get her talking and shit like that. But it was pretty, let's say, uh platonic venue one and then venue two we went out for a drink and she picked that place too which was also another good choice and uh and saint bobby stepped in an elevator with the two of you yeah yeah as a joke yep and uh which i, I thought was cool because you, you you know you're like listening to it almost two ways you know but um yeah and then i kind of made it more i don't want to say aggressive but at least did my did some of the hard work and venue too and then we she actually showed me around town afterwards i didn't have to do anything in that sense i didn't have to like hey let's go do this she just we we're walking down the fucking park she showed me that and she showed me certain buildings and shit like that super sweet and then bounced her back to my place and then we watched some shitty ass tv show and then i escalated a couple times recognized she wasn't getting put out and then you know took her to the bus yeah it chilled out you were not pushy you not me that was the right thing to do and then yeah, what I mean when I when I said she was a yes girl, I meant that in terms of day game, in 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 the terms of like the approach itself, not on oh yeah, like sleep with me, like that's that's sometimes guys misinterpret the the, the yes no maybe girl idea. It doesn't mean she's a yes girl; and she's gonna sleep with you. It's just she's she's gonna be very very open to the approach. It doesn't mean she's gonna sleep with you, and, and that's one thing in. Uh, in 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 the in the intermediate community, we're now working. We're starting to work on dates this month, and and as this one thing where guys fuck up is is a lot of them are only only sleeping with maybe girl with yes girls. They're losing almost all the maybe girls, and and because they're used to how day game is in one country and how dates are in one country, and then they or with one type of girl, and that that's they can only sleep with yes girls. They they don't know how to like as soon as they go on a date with someone a bit more traditional, they don't know how to do that. Like or what's happening. That's why you have so many store stories of guys like going to Ukraine and and then and, and bragging, oh my god, I went on a date with this like hottest girl I ever seen. Like, oh yeah, like, me. like Kiev. No, yeah. but no, like to Kiev. Everyone, everyone who used to go to Kiev was it was just hilarious. Right. Everyone was going there and everyone Everybody's was saying dates. Like, yeah, they were going on these like dates with like hot Ukrainians. And for for them, like seeing girls like that is just like oh my god, because you don't get a lot of that abroad, and especially like in most places in the US. Like okay, if you're from Europe, like you're used to that more or less. But but still and but the there's thing, a stark difference between ukraine and all these other countries it's it's noticeable yeah but you meet girls like like as hot as in ukraine in all of these countries they're sure. not as they're just they're, more rare they're, yeah they're they're not as common as as in ukraine but the, the the trick the secret behind all of those like key up stories about these super hot dates is like how many stories did you hear about guys getting laid with those chicks yeah 
and that's a very small percentage and all of these girl guys are like going on dates and spending money on dates and like if, if everyone is going to a place for girls and those girls are smart enough and then they're gonna pick up and and you're gonna start having some problems just as with Medellin Colombia where, where you know guys are getting robbed constantly for uh, when, when going out and things like that and hookers and, and whatnot so Okay, and then where were we? You go to Riga, you meet yeah. this girl, go and on. yeah, you cut it because you're just chilling, watching the movie. Yeah, I, she, you know, she works nights, so I just kind of, she you could tell she was tired. It just wasn't the time. Didn't over escalate, walked her to the bus, and then yeah, from, from like the coaching and stuff like that, you could really tell Riga girl's pretty down to earth, pretty receptive, pretty. I don't know. I really like them. I really like them. There's a decent amount of quality. Volume probably needs some help, but that's a okay. <laughs> we, we, we have Ukrainians who are moving in. So. Right. Riga has, yeah, Riga during the summer is very good. Again, I don't know. Those Ukrainian girls might be too hard now. Um, no, th- these girls are super sweet. I actually, I like it. It's, uh, allegedly, it's the tallest girls in the, in the in the world or something like that. And they are pretty tall, but... Uh, I like them. The thing guys have to understand is that every place is a bottleneck. Yeah. So you go to New York and the bottleneck is going to be blowouts and then like super short sets. Or you go to Serbia, it's going to be blowouts and, and, and that's, that's it. Yeah, what? It'd be the same thing. Blowouts. Yeah, yeah, blowouts. But then you go to Poland and they're going to be, Flaky. you're not going to get as many blowouts and you're going to run your sets, but the numbers will flake. And then you'll go on dates to nowhere. You have to go on multiple dates, or like there are gonna be dates where she's just out to, to hang out with a foreigner. And you see that in Poland, or or in Ukraine, you would have these chicks where it's super easy to number close them. It's super easy to get them out on dates, but that date means nothing. Like like, and and your chance of getting laid with her is extremely slow, slim, unless you know what you're doing and you are out with the right girl. And in Riga. They're fairly friendly when you stop them, but then if you have no... And sometimes getting numbers is easy, but in general, if you have no game, like then it's just not going to go anywhere on the street. You're going to get that number, but she's going to flake. And then, again, getting them out on dates. Like a bunch of them will just not go out on a date. And, then, and when you go out on a date, unless you go out with the right girl, like you're still going to need some game like to, to convert to convert that to late. It's... it's Riga is definitely not one of the easiest places in the world in, yeah. in, in no way. And, and the traffic is a problem, but, you know, there, there are some good things, uh, some good things yeah, here. The city itself is, like, super laid back. I really like that about it. Yeah, it's super also. chill, but you got to gotta also be here at the right time of the year. Like, yeah, wintertime has got to be dead, right? It's like if you do three sets in two hours, it's a good session. Like, oh, it's a good day. It's perfect for me. <laughs> and yeah, it's for you. It's, it's amazing. So uh, you, you did... Uh, and then you went on another date with her? Yeah, the second date was pretty pretty straightforward. Didn't even have to, you know, do much. Uh, just casually, slowly escalated. Slowly. It's the thing that I learned the most. Uh, something worth noting, at least. Pretty, very comfortable on dates for me. So, I never really feel any anxiety. I already know that the chick's into me on some level. So, for me, it's just, let's just figure it out. And that's that's... I enjoy going on dates too, you know. But uh, with her, it was it was very basic. One venue, back to my place, watched watched a movie for a little while, escalated enough to where she, you know, they said yes, and that was it. And then we we chilled. We got some pizza. Kept watching the movie. Walked to the bus. Waited for her. We're with her, and then yeah, gave her a goodbye hug, and that was it. Super Have you seen her again, or uh, we'll see. I, I, I got she works nights. She does. So work that's nights. A, that's a tricky thing, right? So. And she needs one day to sleep, so if she's she's yeah. If you work nights, then but sometimes it's complicated. Um, what are I don't know main takeaways so far? Because we've been now traveling for almost a month. I like I think over I, a month. Over a month already. Yeah, yeah. So we've been at this over a month, going to different places, exploring day game in different places, trying to figure out your AA and then all yeah. of it. So what are the biggest, kinda, what have you learned about yourself? I think the thing that I learned the most is actually just managing exhaustion. I think uh, I can absolutely overcome AA. 
especially on days where I'm in a good mood, it's it's very easy. It, it seems very normal. I think that we're really just going to see how much I actually care about this. I think that's uh, that's really the way I'm looking at it. How much do I want to keep going out? How much do I want to keep doing this? I like And like I said to you before, I didn't come to day game with zero fucking lays. So the, the, the crazy highs aren't really the crazy highs for me anymore yeah well yeah, you get the hotness in day game that's the, that's the yeah and i i think maybe if i get something that is way way you know if we, i know leagues don't really exist but you know something that i feel like is like oh she's the one bringing the looks to the party for sure maybe i might feel that high for a little while but um i also kind of see it as an avenue to i think at some point settle down find a wife I yeah because like. that's what you, you wanted to have fun for a while and then you know Find someone to build something with more serious with. I think so, yeah. You've had your fun, you have a bunch of plays and... And uh, I think I've pretty much done everything I wanted to do. It's just more of, I think, refining. I, I, I do like the idea of getting better at it. I do, like, when I think about how I used to be on dates before versus how I am now, it's like those are two different guys. I take pride in it. I, I take pride in being smooth you know what i mean kind of almost catching her by surprise oh i didn't shape or so i wasn't even expecting you know those those type of situations that actually kind of like feed the ego a little bit you know and um i think that day game is a very useful tool what is day game because you're you're doing some online as well and you're doing pretty good there yeah on this trip you also got a few lays online so what has day game or learning day game and going on day game dates taught you about online i i i, I think i it's oh man i don't know man i don't Nothing. know fuck day game no it's not that right because like okay so coming here in riga i got two online lays I just happen to get lucky with one of them that's actually pretty cute, you know, and but I'm thinking about the overall average. The only thing I would say that I've learned from day game is that you just statistically speaking, you're going to find better quality from day game, period. Because, you know, there's you get to choose who you approach, you know what I mean? And and they're all, what they're essentially doing is swiping left or swiping right on you in person or some form of that. And so, but yeah, you, there's so many other factors. Like she's going to get to see what you're like on a date at the very least. So she knows you're not some fucking creep or something like that. You know what I mean? So there's that factor. There's the facial expressions. Like every, you know, not every girl, but most girls that I've gone on dates with from online, they'll say something like, oh, you're actually way better looking in person. I was like, oh, fuck. That means I need better pictures. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it, it's still a compliment, you know? And I think it's like, some of the gestures, you know, your facial expressions, you don't see that from online. So I, I fully see that there's the value added effect of day game means that the ceiling is far, far higher versus, you know, finding some yes. I literally see online as finding yes girls that are just into you, why you actually work on this other aspect, you know, which is the, yeah, skills of yeah. picking chicks up. Yeah. And I think that's probably when I think of like, my dating issues it's not over escalation it's not the dates it's not any of that it's just the initial part if i can get that ball rolling i think everything just kind of goes in a straight line after yeah because the dates are dates like it's whether it's day game or like okay the online dates are like slightly they're easier like they are easier but it's sometimes they're not sometimes they're not like sometimes you go out with a girl and just because you were a guy she met on the street she just likes you so much already right. like overall yeah that sometimes makes day game easier just because you might get more bitchiness from like online, yeah, but at yeah. the same time, if you're, you know, with day game, you're trying, you're working on a maybe girl, you know, some girl yeah. that you really have to put some work in. Oh, that, but then again, that's, that's the quality difference, right? So, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. I think we can wrap it up here. Any last words, any last suggestions, any last wishes? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would just give you like a free fucking whatever. I would probably tell anybody who's thinking about getting coaching, Bobby's probably the best one to do it. You know, you, you, you get one on one time, you got a mic on you, he's going to give you immediate feedback. Uh, allegedly, there's a lot of motherfuckers out there that don't do this. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're going to pick anybody, he's, he's the guy. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
If you like this story and you also want to learn day game with me between September and November in somewhere in Europe, UK, USA or Colombia, then head over to the description, click on the link there and you'll find all the details about how coaching usually works, the prices and everything else. That's it for this time. See you in the next podcast. Ciao, guys.